I know special terminology, um, and my accent just doesn't follow that. <laughs> um, but they also became known as Lancashire looms um, because there were so many of them operating in this area. Um, these machines um, were kept in a special building called the Weaving Shed. So we would have left the main building behind and gone to a, a separate or an adjacent weaving shed. The reason for that is because of the, the vibrations from these machines. When they were switched on, they could they could shake buildings apart. So you needed them to be on the ground floor and strong structure around them. And this particular loom came from a weaving shed where they had one thousand a week for them. So although it's an awful lot smaller, um, they really did still pack them in there. Um, how does it work? Well, uh, with your basic weave, you have two types of thread. So you have what's called warp threads. You tend to have lots of those and they run in one direction. And then you take a web thread and go over and over and over and over and over. Um, all the way to the end. <laughs> the problem we have here though is along the back of this machine, on this beam, we have 1,800 warp threads. So to do that, that by hand, it's going to take a really long time. Really boring for all of you guys to watch. So instead, everything gets sped up. Um, and that happens by passing all of our warp threads through a wire. So we've got wires running all the way along, hole in the middle, just like the eye of the needle. Um, half of our warp threads are going to go through a wire in the back, and half of them are going to go through a wire in the front. Also through the back, even through the front. So when the machine switches on, these parts here, they're called heels, the heels will start to move up and down and separate our threads. Half get pulled up, half get dragged down. We've got a nice little gap in the middle, and we send the red threads straight through it. Gets to the other side, heels swap over, wet thread can come back again. And it continues. Um, so in this way, we're able to go over and under 1,800 threads, not about three times every second. So you can see how these very quickly were able to put those hand and heels out of business. I mean, some people very cross, to say the least. Um, I'll also show you how our web thread is moving. Um, to move that, we need one of these. So this is called a shuttle. Web thread goes in the middle. We've got one in our machine just here. So this is what's moving back and forth. It's a shuttle, leaving a trail of thread behind. And the way it's moving is using a picking stick. So this is just made of wood and leather, which is hitting the shuttle. And it's going to be received. It's going to be picked up by the picking stick on this side and hit back again. Um, it's like a very well-timed, well-engineered, very glorified catapult. There's nothing in there, nothing else keeping your shuttle inside the machine, just the threads. If you can imagine, um, if you were a weaver, a woman who worked on this machine, this is extremely dangerous. It's moving at about 40, 45 miles an hour inside that machine. Um, if that comes out and hits you, you are going to be in big trouble. If you're fortunate though, it will just be flying out of the window. Uh, happened quite a lot in these mills. Um, the windows were so expensive that they decided something needed to be done about this. Um, so our mill owner had two options here. He can either change his machinery, make them safer for all of his workers, all of his windows, two birds, one stone, or he can move all his windows to the ceiling. I'm sure you guys can work out which one they decided to do, right? It was much easier just to brick up the windows, move them to the roof, um, and replace your workers if you needed to. Um, now that's awful. Horrible um, conditions, horrible attitudes to have. But something really interesting came out of all of this. Um, if you guys go for a walk around Manchester, or in fact many Lancashire towns, you'll see a lot of very distinctive looking buildings. They're all single story, no windows around, that concertated shape in the roof, with the windows are up there instead. Very distinctive and really associated with the weaving industry, and that is all thanks to this piece of wood. This piece of wood actually changed our architecture in this area, and I just think that's absolutely incredible, and a, a, a true example of just how big this industry was. Um, so on that note, I will get this machine going for you guys. Um, it's all happening very quickly, so what I'm going to do is I will place um, a small pencil on a mark of all. So if you guys can come out of that pencil and move forward, it gives you an idea of how quickly that can all be just.
see in that time, our pencil marks come what, an inch and a half, maybe two inches of cloth there. So you can imagine what thousands of these machines we go through um, running 10, 12 hours a day, maybe five, six days a week. Um, they reckon that the, the height of the cotton industry, Manchester and Lancashire were responsible for producing 70% of the entire world's cotton goods. So around about the 1920s mark, 70% of the entire world's cotton goods coming out of this area. Which is an incredible number. Um, today, unsurprisingly, that's a, a lot less, an awful lot less, um, but we are left with a, a very strong legacy. Um, not just for um, the, the architecture, like that, but for us as workers, we owe them a lot. They, they went on strike and they got us a lot of rights and benefits that we've got today. Um, sick pay, health and safety legislation, and they don't complain about it. Um, children, they, they don't have to go to work, they get to go to school. And, um, and even things like football, a huge industry in Manchester today, but the earliest teams were performed in um, so the workers just have a bit of a kicker on them when they talk. Um, so that's the end of the talk.